And tonight, we are talking about shaping surfboards. And this all comes about... Not, not shaping surfboards, making your own board. Okay, making your own board. Everything yeah. from design through to completion, through to taking it in the water and actually surfing it. So, th so this comes about because we kind of... Um, we kind of decided that it was time that I designed and made my own board. Well, what, what's been happening is that you have been involving, in terms of Omni, yeah. like your awareness, which is the mind aspect, it's, it's really got a lot bigger. Your understanding's bigger. Yep. Your, your movement from body surfing to your surfing, leaning, compressing, twisting, all of that's got really good. Um, your wave knowledge, like the type of lines that you want to take, all of that's got really good. Then I thought, let's take a deep dive on equipment. <laughs> and let's see how much you really know and understand and how much you appreciate. Yeah. Hang on, let me just bring the, um, the comments up. I can't see the comments. Cool. Neither can I. I'll bring my glasses up. I actually physically can't, can't see them because I've got them turned off somewhere. So, uh, so you, you talk a little bit into, into the whole... Okay, so <clears throat> um, you often see people in the water writing go. the board off, going, oh, this thing's a piece of crap. But they don't actually realize how much goes into making a surfboard. Um, there we go. Now, right, now, now, now I can concentrate. The comments are back there. There they are. Okay, cool. So, Mate. hi, and 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 the master. Yes. Hello. Hi, guys from Cold Cold Devon you in the UK. Saying? Yes, that's uh, Kevin my hometown. Devin. Good. <laughs> well, that's what I said in one of the in one of the videos. So, I was originally from Exmouth in Devon, and yes, I understand how cold it can be. Now, before we get into tonight's content, actually, very quickly, if you haven't downloaded the free PDF, which I've got a very cool button here, check this out. No, that's not the right one. <laughs> this is the right button. Hang on, let's go back here. Let's go this button. This is the one I want. This, this, this little thing here in the middle of the screen, the, the surf science. If you haven't got your free copy of that yet, then make sure that you head over to Ombi. This is complicated. I oh, know, it's all, it's all around the wrong way. But you can get your, a copy of this, this free thing, this thing here. All you've got to do is head over to the website ombi.co. If you click on the button that says Join Surf Hacks, click that. Enter in your email, we'll get that sent through to you. And not only do you get the PDF, you also get a whole bunch of really cool videos as well. We get put into a four-week four week program, so that's pretty cool. So make sure that you do that. Let me get rid of that button. And yeah, let's let's get into tonight. The board, we should, so we're talking about boards, making your own board. The board that I've made is on the other side of this camera. You're going to get to see it later on. It's the ugliest thing you'll ever see in your life, but I... But you love it. I do love it. I said to him, it's like a much. pug. You buy the dog because it's ugly. It's got like a squashed face and it's just so cute. Anne's board is not cute, it's just ugly. It is. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's been named the, uh, the Mutant, and that will all become clear as to why it's been called the Mutant. So just, okay, first of all, hello Winnie from Netherlands. Hello Enrique from Oakhampton. I don't even know where Oakhampton is. Corin is walking to the wave right now. So, so, so the wave is the wave pool there in Bristol, back there in the UK. So Corin's walking there right now to go and have a surf session. So. If Corin was a, ah, okay, so, so Corin's, uh, I'm assuming this is Corin who's in the insiders group. Yep. If, if somebody was about to go and surf the wave pool now, and if, if it is Corin, I remember you saying that, that you're pretty new to surfing. What's one thing that Corin could focus on inside the wave pool that's going to help her? Okay, well, when you pal into a wave, just breathe before you stand and do your pop up. Just slow it all down, take a breath, um, start to feel. Okay, cool. Hopefully that, uh, that's helpful for you there, Corin. Uh, and we've got, yes, yeah, so Enrico Takeoff Photography Probably. is uh, Wide Mouth. Weird Mouth, not Wide Mouth, Weird Mouth. <laughs> what? Okay, whatever. So, yeah, so I was just, just mentioning them that I was from Devon, and, uh, and, and Enrico Takeoff Photography is also from Devon in Oak, Oak, Oak Hampton, which was half an hour from me. Anyway, that's. Um, Good day from West Oz. Good day from Byron Bay, Jake. Um, Listen, Byron Bay. We've got Sudicle in West, uh, West Australia, and we got oh, uh, Troll Van 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 Vake. Van Vake. Van Vake, yeah. Van Vake is just got a Clayton board. Looks and feels amazing. Yes, they always do. Okay, so <laughs> mine mine doesn't, but it is. <laughs> right, let's go. Let's let's talk about this. So there are a lot of lessons to be learned from shaping your own board, and I think that shaping your own board, you get a much a much greater appreciation as to what actually goes goes into the creation of a surfboard. I think one of the big mistakes, well, not necessarily a mistake, but a problem that one of the 
oversights. That's probably the better word. One of the, a lot of, one of the oversights that a lot of surfers make is they go into the shop, they buy a board, and or they look at review on, they just go and surf it and don't think too much about it. Well, well they, they stick it under the arm and the board generally feels light and they go, this feels amazing, and they buy it. Like yeah. they, they don't think like, okay, what's it, how's it going to be used? What's it designed for? What are, what are the different functions? How's this board going to operate in the type of waves that I want to ride? Mm. And then generally when they ride the board, they often often either surprised or disappointed. Yeah. And I'd probably say that most times they disappoint. Well, a lot of the times they're disappointed. And why do you think that they become so disappointed? Because they they make the purchase on maybe an impulse where they saw um, someone in Indo looking amazing on a hypto crypto on this big powerful wave getting barreled, hair blowing back. They buy the hypto crypto and go so for one to two foot week, I don't know, Crumbin Alley or something like that, and the board doesn't go nearly as fast, mm. the hair doesn't blow back as fast as they'd like, and it doesn't do what they thought the board would do, yeah. and they get a bit disappointed. Yeah, and I mean, there's a big difference as well between the waves that we might get here on the Gold Coast versus uh, versus waves back in the UK, for example. Yeah. There's a huge difference in, in, in how those waves, like the power of those waves, and and what would be a good board here on the Gold Coast? So you could watch somebody here. Well, okay, like, let's look at this way. The Dream Tour, it's called the Dream Tour because they surf in these exotic locations with good waves, mm. okay? Which is almost like um, Formula One drivers having a beautiful track, okay? Um, it's, their, their pro boards are engineered to ride good waves and harness that energy and the power in those waves. Um, and it's very rare that those guys are surfing knee-high gravel, which is often like what, what we've been surfing for the last two months. Yeah. So um, to, to base your purchase on what John John's doing out at Margaret River on a Parzell, and then go and surf your local beach break when it's knee-high on that same Parzell, those two aren't going to add up. Mm. It's almost um, like if this was Formula One, watching Schumacher go 300 k's around a, around a corner, and then you're going, buying a, a Ferrari, but then you go and sit in traffic, going, how this thing choose petrol? I'm like, yeah, surprisingly. Like, it, it doesn't make sense sometimes. Just a quick one. Yeah. How do you expect me to get a board inside a Ferrari? It ain't going to happen. I don't think you well, put roof racks on a Ferrari. <laughs> Imagine that, a roof racks on a Ferrari. There must be somebody somewhere. Let's put, put roof racks on a surfboard on a Ferrari. I, I thought this was a really, really nice point here from, from Brendan. Good evening. Play Amp and the Omni team, your content has forever changed my surfing. Thank you. Okay, so awesome. what we want to do tonight is give you some insights. Yep. So, the, this is getting warm, I'm, I'm getting excited, or both. Um, no, it is actually warm in here. I might actually actually go and flick the aircon on. I'm going to go and flick the aircon on while, while, while you get excited in a second. Ooh, okay. Um, we've got a really, really cool question here from Winnie. Are we, are we going into questions straight away? No, but... Um, it's a cool one that I want to answer. Okay, so... Okay, let me... Let me, let me so, we weren't going to do down. questions straight off the bat, but Clayton's decided to mix things up this evening, so we're going, we're going, we're going free range. Yeah. It's maybe a strange question, but I was wondering if, if women surfers might need a slightly different shaped board than male surfers, besides volume due to weight. I've been sitting on this question for quite some time. So, after all my years of coaching, um, women definitely move different to the way men move. Do you agree with that? Yeah, and wasn't it um, Patrick that, that came in and was actually talking about the centre of gravity? Yeah, so if you look at a man's... Oh, I wish I could draw. Well, 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 hang on a minute. You start explaining and I'm going to make it possible so that you can okay. draw if you want to. So to answer your questions, yes, men and women definitely move differently. Um, it's so so men are shaped like Romans, Roman body shapes, and mm -hmm. women are shaped like Egyptian body shapes. Is that, is that the right way to say it? Um, I don't know what you're going with this, so well, just, just right. the body shapes. There we go, you can do some drawing okay. now. So, Let me just get rid of that bit of the side, a bit more space. So, the Roman body shape kind of looks like, like that, and the Egyptian body shape kind of looks like that. Okay, so imagine there's a Roman, he's a big soldier, he's got his legs, and there's your like Egyptian body shape, which is the woman. Okay. Okay. And what it suggests is 
this is, let's call this ladies, and let's call that men. Right, so because of the shape of the ladies, they carry their center of mass in the hip area, which is more down there. Okay? Okay. And men carry their center of mass probably a little bit more higher up. Okay. Okay. And I think you can go back. <laughs> your, your drawing blows my mind. <laughs> Why? I was being sarcastic. Uh, <laughs> all right, so generally when women bend, they, they have a tendency to want to bend from the hips. Mm. Okay? Men will keep their back straight and have more of a tendency to bend from the knees. Yep. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's from a, a motherly nature instinct where, where mothers kind of hold their kids and protect the young or what it is. Or if it's because guys are just raving lunatics with too much testosterone and their chest, beating their chest and trying to chase wild animals or what it came from. But the big thing that I noticed is that because women tend to bend their hips more. Yep, James tend- actually said, I think women use the hips more to surf. Yes. 100%. But um, with them using their hips more, it tends to make them bend their back more, lock their legs more, and they tend to surf a little flatter. Okay. Okay. Whereas the guys are bending the knees and almost starting to lean and use their center of mass and use their rails better than what girls do. Right. Okay. So because of this, can you clear this for me? And let's bring this back up. Right, so let's go ladies board and let's go men's board. So this is what I found and I even saw somewhere um, Matt Biolis, who's a, a famous surfboard shaper, he also does this for his ladies too, where the ladies will get slightly more nose rocker but then a flatter tail rocker. So it's a side on. Yes. Yep. Okay, guys will have a little bit more tail rocker. And the reason behind this is because the ladies are surfing a bit more flatter on their board, they need more planing speed to go that way, and they aren't generating enough speed from their board. So a flatter board over here means that when the wave lifts up by doing that, the board gets more acceleration. And they 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 almost pivot turn a little bit. Mm -hmm. But guys, when they surf, the rocker will slow them down going in a straight line, but when they surf on rail, that rocker actually helps them to turn better and surf more rail to rail. Okay. Okay. So generally, because the ladies surf a bit more flatter because of the, ge- the genetic makeup and how they hip bend, mm-hmm. they need flatter rockers, a little bit wider boards because their backs are bent, they're slightly off balance a bit more. Guys can r- ride narrow boards because their backs are a bit more straighter mm. and they use their legs a bit more. Yep. Anyway, that's that's a little side-on tangent that I went on. There was, there was that was actually very interesting. I've uh, never heard you explain that before, and I thought I'd heard everything. But there we go. Anyway, sorry. Yep. Let's um, let me get rid of that comment off of the screen. Thanks, Joe, Jake. Okay, so shaping our own boards is. I kind of had a bit of a plan in my head as to where we're going, but you kind of hoodwinked me by asking by by. Uh, uh, by, by doing the question. So, okay, so, so, so let's go back to, to that design phase. So, so the board okay, which... Well, let's, tell, let's call up some video and we'll just talk over the video. Okay. So, can you bring up the video of when we designed the board? Yes, I can. All right, so um, what I did is I got Ant in front of a computer and I said, all right, think of your favorite board and let's use that as a base model. And off that base model, we would then be able to generate yeah. any board that you want. So, he's currently looking at any audio what I've designed, yeah. so this and is he's the kind of laughing program. to himself. But he won't. This is me trying to look at the screen. Me, uh, okay, let's just pause it there because people don't watch me because there's a lot of me talking. Okay, so, and you had over the last two years, you've had a number of surfboards, at least a dozen. Would you say? What's that, sorry? You've had at least a dozen boards in the last two years. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Easily. <laughs> okay. But in the back of your mind... I've gone through so many. You've had a, a shape that resonated with you when you were at the Way Pool in Bristol. Yeah, so, so no, so, so there, was, there was three boards that I've ridden, which there were little bits of them that I really liked. One of them was my Lost Puddle Jumper, which was like my first ever high-performance... Why did you like it? Surfboard. Uh, I think... 
looking back at it now, it was because it went fast, and I, and I, and I liked the quad setup on that one. So I, I, I always, I always so, rode it. So quad. when you're in flat mode, running for the shoulder, it yeah. did exactly what you wanted to do. It ran with you. Yeah. Okay. So, so there was a lost puddle jumper. Then there was also, um, I had a, a board from Surfboard Warehouse, which is a company here in, in Australia, called an Eco Bean. Which, when I started to get back into surfing again, I bought the Eco Bean, which was a, like a baked potato kind of shape. Really high volume, really super wide, high volume. really thick. Yeah. It's, it's like, like a long rocker. That, yeah, like flat. So it's just an easy way to catch waves. Yeah. So, other than that, you didn't like it, except you could catch a lot of waves on it. And again, it was pretty fast. Okay, fast and you can catch waves. Yeah. Yes. So there's a pattern happening. Yeah, yeah. Anthony likes to go fast. And then the other one, so I'm, I'm trying to look at the comments at the same time I was doing this. And then the other one was when I was over in the UK, I was surfing the wave pool. And while I was, let me, let me bring us back up full screen. While I was at the wave pool, I decided, I decided that I would test out as many boards as possible as I could in the wave pool. I went to the wave pool quite a few times. As many boards as I could just to have a bit of a feel of different things. So, so just something about Ant, when he does some things, he, he doesn't do half measures. Like he, he, he goes down the wormhole, rabbit hole, and then he gets lost, and then he kind of claws his way back and goes like, whoo, that was fun. Yes, Al always fun, always fun. And there was one particular board there that I really, really, really liked to the point where I was almost going to get, I was almost going to buy one while I was in the UK and bring it back with me. But I decided against it. But yeah, so that was the, that was the other board. And that was this, this it was, I'm 6'1". I think the one that I was riding in the wave pool was a 5'6". It was tiny, weeny little thing, but it was, again, it wasn't quite as wide, but it was this real nice round tail. So I liked the sort of, the, I suppose, the, the curvy flowiness. Of it. So those three things were the things I was trying to combine into one board. So, so what I got out of that as a shaper, something that paddles really well so you can catch lots of waves, yep. something that's really fast, but something that turns. Yeah. Okay. So then we try to sit down and come up with a base model that you could choose something from. So do you know what board I chose? So... I've had some customers oh. come in and they requested some, some Hypto Crypto. So I had my version of a Hypto Crypto and I gave that to you as your base model. Yeah. And I said, so, from that so, base model. So let me bring the iPad back up again. So, so, so you gave me this basic outline design. You said, go from there. So I wasn't starting completely from scratch, but I was going to make all, the, all these adjustments to it. Now, if you look at the bit of footage there, that's the 3D version of, of what we come up with afterwards so I, I, don't, I don't think we've got the video of this but i i wanted the big round tail I wanted so, the, so why did you want that extra wide round tail why oh the extra so this board so, so, so put it this way imagine we're talking about cars yeah and you went for big wide tires and i'm going wah and you went i'm going off road i'll go okay yeah, so, so the reason for the big, big white tower, I feel like I've been put on the spot now. I should have turned the aircon on a bit more. I'm going to start sweating <laughs> under the pressure. I feel like I'm being interrogated. Uh, so the board, first up, the board wasn't designed to surf amazing waves. I specifically thought, okay, I want a board for the really mushy conditions that, that we've got at the moment. So I wanted a board that was, that was going to be able to catch that mushy, really weak, wind swelly kind of kind of wave so the reason for the big tail was so that i could get a lot of lift so when i'm doing the oreo it pushed me forwards the reason for the curve is because i also wanted it to be so i wanted it to be really flowy on the wave okay so you've got outline curve and then i also wanted the, the the width so i went quite quite wide on this board compared to what i'm riding now and that was just for that that planing speed just more planing speed yeah surface area balance all makes yeah. sense and then we went low rocker on yep. it as well so that again got that planing speed went short not not five six short but five ten which is a bit shorter than i would normally ride and it was it was concave through to double concave correct um what fin setup so we put five box in but i'm running it as a quad i am running the board as a quad setup and that was what i thought would be amazing and the, the rails were pretty full as well the, why did you go for four rails? 
I'll be honest and say that I'm still a little bit, I, st I, I still don't 100% understand Rails, but since, but this is, this is the key thing now. Since making the board and riding it, I now understand a bit more about the Rails because my, my twin fin that I've got has got very performance Rails. And so I rode this board one day, the board that I just made, and then I rode the twin fin the next day, and I was like, oh, okay, straight away, now I can feel the difference in the rails. And then also I've been surfing the finless a lot at the moment, which has got these real C-shaped rails, so that you, you get that, you get, you get, you get hold. That, that, that hold when you, when you get the rail in. So the initial, the initial design that I made, I've done it on the computer, had it all sort of laid out, and I'm, I'm not the best with that computer, that particular computer program. So, okay, hands hands up here. Clayton did help with the whole moving the things around. But I guided, I sort of said what I wanted. And you looked at it afterwards. <laughs> you had to delete it and start again because it was when you put it into the into the 3D view, that view that you can see now, that uh, it had all these kinks and funny bumps and stuff in it. So we had to restart. Yeah, I, could, I couldn't get the thickness distribution to flow. It was kind of like um, like a lopsided cake or I don't know. It, was, it just, it didn't flow well. So we redid it and it came out good. Yeah. So check Craig Fox's. Um, yeah, let's come back up full screen again. And so, 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 so yeah, I mean, that's one of, the, one, one of the first things as well. From now making my own board, it's now given me a greater understanding of rails because when we were designing the board, Clayton said, what sort of rails do you want? And I didn't really know. I kind of knew that, that, uh, that a fuller rail is harder to sink and that a thinner rail is going to knife in a bit better, but I, I didn't quite understand how that would translate into the water. But now from doing it, I've now got a much better understanding as, as, to, as to what rail does different things. And how they feel. Yeah. So Chris, uh, sorry, Craig has said, how much do you think Think about fins when shaping a board. Do shapers ever build boards around fins? So do you want to answer that first and I'll jump in afterwards? Well, my, my, my answer is going to be when Clayton said, what well, I, I said, well, can we just put five boxes in there just so that I can have the option? Yeah, so you can, you can mess around. Okay, so what did I say to you was the most important part of the surfboard? What was the most important part of the surfboard? Mm. Where, where did I, what did I say was like the engine? Like how, what determines whether this board goes fast, whether the board turns? Um, like where does all that control come from? Wasn't that the, uh, the outline? No. Oh. Clearly Anthony wasn't listening. What was it? Okay. Um, so Ant, do you recall a conversation? So if this is your rail in my hand, I spoke about the back half where the edge starts to tuck under. Oh, you, you're, just talking, about, in front you're, of the you're talking about the, the, the quarter and then the eighth and then the half. And yeah, but also like where does the edge start? How, how square is it? How much roll do you have in the bottom rail? Um, oh, okay. That conversation. I remember it, but I can't remember it being that important. What? <laughs> <laughs> that, I said okay. to you that's the most important part of a board. Okay, so... When did you say that? You did not say that. I did. Right. Anyway. You had your head in the clouds. All right, so check us out. I was high on resin at the time. Could, could you... I don't know if you have any clips of you of us shaping that part. Hang on. Oh, what, the, the, the bit where you were talking about the Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's so try to so find that and bring that up. No, really, I do remember really that, important. but you never emphasised just how important that was. Hang on. Uh, Hang on a minute. I mean, okay, let's play this while I'm, we talk. I'm going to bring the... Uh, the iPad out, so that was that it. done at the uh, so, uh, Shapers. Shapers is the one stop shop. They got, got epoxy, they got resin, they got all the blanks you need. They got so that's fins. all I need. Yeah. They got fins, they got cloth, they got carbon. Spiking, so as you can see, we've uh, got the blank. Now we've got to go to. After oh, right there. Going to Shapers. Got to go here. To, drive to D, not the op shop. Meters down the road and we Hang on. To DMS. So the guys from here. DMS. Uh, to get it machine cut. He's the guy that came up with carbon wrap that um, Mayhem Circle There uses. you go, you can see the carbon wrap. Yeah, and that, that was just designed Ooh. here in Crumbin. Um, cool. So they, they were really nice machine and cut. allowed us to go into the factory and um, use their shaping machine. Oh, we should, we should just, well, we'll point out here, I decided to go for PU over epoxy because I thought I was going to mess it up and say it, wasn't, it wouldn't have been quite such an expensive mistake for myself. 
had I messed up the uh, the PU. Well, when shaping your first board, yeah, uh, um, no, man, doesn't have this the is glassing oh, experience. Yeah. So blank. when you use a PU blank, you have to glass it with resin. And right. we also decided to go for sun Next resin. time we see that, yeah, so it'll we glass it in the shed. In the mutant, the we found a name for the board. Once the board had was laminated. We Guys, we're back down. But yeah, this is us going into it. This is us picking up the board. Oh, so this is, so what you saw before was obviously the blank. This is us now re-picking it back up again and it's and it's being cut. You can see it's a, it's a really short supermodel with, with a really big nose. There it is, there's, there's my round tail. And a very round tail. You can see Anne's foot looks quite small compared to how wide that tail is. And then it was a case of, all right, let's go home and do some Okay, all right, okay, here, here we go. Sorry, you're gonna have to, if, you, if you're watching now, just turn your head to the side if you want to see it. <laughs> so that's, that is the blank cut. Now, what Clay is talking about, the thing that which apparently I was meant to know, and, oh no. I think we, we, we end up shaving it. So at this point, it's still got machine lines on it, and Ant has to then have his hand at actually what shapers oh. would call scrubbing. Yeah, so you, so you can see, if, you, if, if you've got good enough quality internet, you can see the... Those little lines there. Word ridges. So basically a big wheel went up and down, backwards and forwards, and it left um, the little like scars on the foam. That and is that to, to, is to shape the board. So it's got the rails a, and you can see it's some ridges and in the board. So you've got to just out. blend the ridges out. Which is another story. Yep. So now with this, I tried to film as much as possible, but I got... That, oh, there we go. There's, there's me doing my doing the thing. Okay, so just add to route in the, the fin boxes in. in the fin boxes. It was probably and it's, it's really most stressful bit so far. One false move or didn't hold things tight enough and, and okay. And so on. Let's let's just stop there for a second because let's talk about fins. Okay. Because I can I draw on this? Yeah, if I bring it back up again. I was okay. I was super concerned about routing in these fins because it was this certain distance up from the bottom and it had to be set at so, the side and different angle and blah, blah, blah. It was Generally, on a standard surfboard, this back fin over here is about three and a quarter to three and a half inches up from the tail. Your side fins, which are these ones over here, those are set at about 11 up and your quad rears over here are roughly at about five. Now, if you were to get a twin fin, Okay, twin fins are set anywhere at about nine inches up, which is about that line, the second one from the top. So you can clearly see by all the different fin combinations that you can't simply put twin fins into a thruster because the thruster fins are, are too far forward and your twin fins wouldn't work there. Your board would be too loose. Two seconds. Hang on a can you mute the iPad, please? We oh, can't hear okay. So you're talking on the iPad, all the sounds coming up. Mute the video. Okay. Yeah, so this is coming up with sound. Okay. Shouldn't have been, but um, can you hear? Can you hear Clayton now? Hello, hello, testing. So if you play, hang on. So hang on. the sounds coming up here. There we go. Yeah. So then, and wanted you wanted to spray the board. So. Do you want to tell a story about just, the... Just hang on two seconds. I just want to check, because I haven't been watching the comments. Okay. I've been watching the comments. What What have you missed? Ah. Oh. Just, just so you know, Enrico actually got the whole thing right about that question. Rails, yes. Well done. Okay. Sorted. Okay. For, per, Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, right, so let me pull that there back down again. Now we're back in business. All right, so once the board is all shaped up and the fins are cut, we're ready to put some color on. So I'll hand we, over to you. Yeah, but we've, 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 we've kind of skipped a bit here. Oh, back and, and unfortunately, we didn't, we didn't have the, the, the bit of footage of us shaping that. So, so with the rails, now, can you, yeah, just bring up, let me, let me draw, I'll draw the rails for you. Which way we go? Let's go backwards. Okay, go, go oh, there we go. Hang on. No, no. I had the person oh. put on. Oh, hang on. <laughs> I'm going the wrong direction. Yeah. 14, 13, 12, 11. There we go. Right, I'm trying to find 
This bit, this is the bit I was looking for. You, you've, you've got a bit of a sneak preview as to how ugly this board is. I want, it, I want it when it's turned over with the fins there so that we can talk about it. Because there was something which Clayton got quite... There, so okay. let's talk about there. Okay, so talk about the rails. Because what, what this involved was me having a bit of gauze and running it down the rails. And so from the tail, so from the tail here, where it was a sharp edge, to then a, a rounder edge down here, but bringing it around. And, and I, I was just like, really? Like, that makes that much difference? And it, we're talking microscopic amount. To me, they were microscopic amounts. And, and Clayton was just like, yeah, yeah, that makes a huge difference. Like, you've got to get this bit right. And so. OK, so the area between there and there is one of the most important parts of the surfboard. So basically, when the board's going straight, um, if you lean over the rail, if your rail is a bit more squarer, it means that the board can't roll over. But because it is, there's a downward pressure and there's force from the back, the squarer of the rail will make the board drive forward, giving it more speed. The more rounder the rail is, when you lean over and put pressure on the rail, the board will roll and turn. So depending on that, that green area between the, your front foot and the fin area, when you lean on the board, that's your deciding factor as to how much speed and drive and hold the board has or how much control the board has over turning. Mm. So depending on the waves that you ride, like if you're riding really flat waves, you want a FOSS board, you're going to have a bit more of a boxier rail because it won't want to roll as much. Mm. And if you're riding some big waves and you're taking off and you're trying to control the board and put on rail, you're going to round those rails, allowing the board to go on rail and to get the, the curve of the board into the water. Yeah. So um, as a shaper, that's where you fine tune the board to what the, sh what the surfer needs. So if you've got a good relationship with a shaper and he's able to interpret the waves that you, you ride and the skill level that you had and, and what you want from the board, he can then fine tune that to your needs. Mm. Whereas if you just walk into a shop, you know what you're looking for, you'll just pick up a board and go, oh, this feels great. Not knowing kind of what's under the hood as it were. Like how's that car fine tuned? Mm. Now, now a, really, a, a really cool thing here, if you are gonna go into a shop and, and pick a circle up and put it underneath your arm and all that feels good, one of the things that, that you taught me, and also uh, Greg taught me as well, so, so Greg, Greg Rooster. Um, Greg's our laminator. He's so one of the best. The, one, the best. The best glasser in the world. He, he, I think he'd, he'd be laughing if, if he'd come in and see me trying a glass. But when you, when you hold the board up, and so if you hold the board vertically, um, could I try and show you with, with one of these. If you run your hands down the rails like this, you're getting a feel of the rails. You were saying about using which was this. So, so your this hands here of your fingers to feel have it have so much feeling in. So when you round your fingers, you, you're almost using the inside of here, and you've, you've got so much sensitivity there. Like even if you take this finger and you rub it down lightly, very gently, like feather light, your hand will almost tingle afterwards. So when you rub your hands down that rail, you're almost getting your fingertips to paint an image of your mind and to compare the left hand to the right hand to feel that the rails are balanced and that everything feels right. And the really weird thing is, is I'm somebody who's inexperienced in, in surfboard shaping. When I was stood there feeling the blank down to check that we'd done the rails right with that, with that um, a bit of uh, tape gauze, gauze I, would, I, I had to close my eyes, I probably looked a bit weird, like meditating, holding onto a piece of polystyrene in the garden. But I could feel the, the difference. And it's really weird, because I don't know what I'm doing, but I could feel the difference, these really small differences in okay. the rails. So here's the kicker now. Now that Anne could feel the differences, so he's got two different rails. I said to him, imagine that you've got two different bicycles. You've got like a, a cruiser that a lady would ride with a basket in the front with a really wide tire and a really soft, comfortable seat, and she's just cruising around. Like she, she's gone to the market, got the vegetables, 
and she's just cruising. You just stereotyped every single Sorry. female. <laughs> no, I, I don't mean to do that. I'm, I'm trying to just like... Then, right, we get what you mean, we get what you mean, you got, we're used to it. Then you've got like, say, a Lance Armstrong Tour de France going down a hill 60 miles an hour, and he's just leaning into the turn, and that small little tire is just turning really, really quick. Yeah. Okay, so I said to Ant, imagine the surfboard now, that, that bottom edge that I'd said is so crucial to the surfboard, the smaller you make the bottom tuck under, okay, the quicker the board's going to turn. The, the, the fatter and the more drawn out and the more rounder that you make that, the bottom edge of that board, kind of like the slower that board's going to turn, but the smoother the board's going to turn. Mm. So I said to him, decide what bottom edge you want and decide how your board is going to feel through the turn. And then you had to kind of gauze and get that right. Yeah, which I did. But now, having said that and having surfed the board, right, what do you want from your board now? Because you must want to make another one now. Well, hang, hang, hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's define let's, that I want to make another one. I don't know if I want to make another one, uh, but I would like, there's a few improvements that I would like to well, make. Well, you'd like to the, revisit your design file. Yeah, so I, I, I would like to change the rails slightly. Uh, and I'd definitely like to go for epoxy over PU because it's it's just it's pretty weighty. Uh, so yeah, but otherwise I, I think it's I I I, I quite like it. But um, that's somebody's pretty keen to to hear the bad thing. But uh, look at this. Look, just so you know, it's not all ladies that ride bikes with baskets. No, they, they share bikes. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> All right. Okay, anyway. so let, let's jump into the actual glassing of the board. I don't know if you yeah. have any videos of that. Okay, this is where we don't get very much video because this is where Ant got this stressed. This was hands-on. So he basically, no, I'm sure he had some time lapses or something. But, uh, I might have done. I'll have a look, I'll have a look okay. through the footage. So basically when you glass a board, it gets Most stressful bit so far. Cloth on the one. top deck and one layer on the bottom. The reason behind that is you stand all over the top deck so it needs to be glassed stronger to prevent denting and so on. So you, you pull the layer of cloth out and then you've got to cut around the board as clean as you can because if there's any loose strands or anything like that, what's going to happen is that when you laminate the board, those loose strands, then you have to sand them off later and the, the cleaner your glass, oh, here we go. the better the end product is. So here's Ant. Hold, here's Ant holding tension in his shoulders. Is this a video or? It will be a little video. Okay, so if, if I just um, pause that, well, what's this getting? Okay, so if I, well, I'm going to zoom in here. So this is like a little bit of a loose strand if I have a little bit of an arrow pointing out. But the more loose strands there are, it's almost like the whole board wants to unravel. And then when you're laminating it, it just gets messy. It's like. Um, Hang on a minute. Pat is, someone said the sound's back on the iPad. The sound shouldn't be on the iPad. I've, I've definitely muted it. Okay, we'll keep going. Right, so anyway, um, the board gets two layers. So Ant cuts the first layer, he then has to pull the second layer. Which we have, which I have footage of the second layer coming over. Yep, so there's Ant all proud of himself, pulling the second layer over the board. Um, and then you've got to cut about an inch lap now, this is what's interesting. All right, so just pause it over there. Okay, right. So if I asked everyone, where does the strength lie in a surfboard? I don't know, if, can, can anyone just write feedback and tell me where, where does the strength come from in a surfboard? Maybe just in the comments, just this throw I, in some comments. This I do know the answer to. I yeah, don't know you, the answer to the other one, so I'm gonna say shtum for this one. Um, so, so, so while, while, while you're typing in, a comment has come in <laughs> asking what is, the, what is the inspiration behind the paint design? So let me, uh, let me explain the paint design because yes, I know it's, I know it's, it's, it's an ugly looking board. Uh, the reason for, for that colour is because, hang on, let me get rid of that. So the reason for that particular paint job and design is because 
it was a it was a combination of three boards. And with me designing my first ever board, I thought it wasn't going to be very good. It's probably going to look really ugly. So I was going to originally going to call it the mutant, which was basically a, a, a mixture of different designs all all put together. Then Clayton said, "Why don't you call it the mutant?" Which we then did so, and obviously moot, and then ant, because I'm shaping the board. So I kind of thought green, make it kind of look a little bit cowish with the, with the patches on it. Well, it's like the mutants from X-Men, so we went for mutant. Mutant, yeah. 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 So, cool. that, that, so that's the reason why it is luminous green. I thought that's kind of mutant -y color. And the, 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 the patches were meant to be bright orange, and they turned out not. And then there's one random pink one on there. But... Uh, Okay, so, right, so let's have a look here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put up all of the ones that, 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 that were said. So, okay. Old Surf Dad says a stringer. Craig Fox says a stringer. Steve Holloway says a stringer. Uh, Sudo Clon says uh, rail cloth. Will Southern says stringer. Jake Webster says the foam. Tom Richardson says rails. Brad Rock says str stringers coming up a lot here. Um, so, we've got Ian, stringer and rail. So he, um, a D says where it's thickest. Okay, strength is where the most volume is. Okay, on the connection between the resin fiber and stringer. Would have said stringer, but but now yeah, okay, on the stringer, fence. rails and stringer. Okay, so let's let's answer this. Someone's then. put stringerless boards. Throwing it in the mix there. What about stringerless boards? Okay, so um, I wonder if I should go into a little backstory about this. Do you mind me go off on a tangent? You do whatever you want. Okay, you so do. when PU foam is made, so you, you get two chemicals. Let's call it chemical A and chemical B. You mix these chemicals together and you pour it into a mold and then you heat the mold up and the foam... You're going to want to draw, aren't you? Yeah, okay, let me, let me draw. So imagine you've you got chemical A, chemical B, and then you mix these up and you pour the chemicals into a mold. So, so here's my, my big mold over here, okay? Now, what happens, it's a big, heavy concrete mold. And when you heat the mold, the chemicals expand, hit the top of the mold, and start pushing back on each other, okay? okay? So those, those chemicals, they create like a honeycomb structure. And the tighter the, the honeycombs are together, the stronger the structure is. So if this is like honeycomb, it's almost like, do you understand? It's like they all support each other. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yep. Now, uh, where's the eraser? So if you had big cells next to small cells, you'd have an inconsistent stroll structure and the blank would be really soft. It would start disintegrating and falling apart. So that mold that you pour the chemical into, if it had rock air in it, all the chemical would roll to the center and the center would be really strong with small cells and the, the, the nose and tail, there'd be no foam there so you'd have big stretched cells which would be really weak. Mm -hmm. So you have to pour the foam into a flat concrete mold. Okay? Yep. But then how do you get curved back into the board again? Well, you cut that blank in half, so you saw it in half, you then get wood and you cut in a, you get a block of wood and you basically cut rocker into the wood. Okay. You then split the blank apart. Just, and just stop, just, just to clarify, is this a plan? So this one. Okay, let me start again. It'll make more sense if I do this. All right. Okay. So, so what I'm trying to say is that you can't pour foam into a mold with rocker in because all the chemical will run to the center. Yep. So you need to pour that. it into a flat mold. So you're basically making a polystyrene or, or a foam brick. Pretty much, yes. In the shape, okay. A brick in the shape of this outline of the surfboard. Yep. But then you cut that, you cut, so this is the outline of the, of the blank. So that's, that's looking down from the top? Yep, top view. You cut it in half. Okay. And you insert a wood stringer that has curve in it. Okay. Okay. So the rocker effectively. Yeah. So basically you insert this. And that's a side on view. So that's a side view now. Correct. And you bend the foam. Okay. And you clamp it together and you glue it together. So basically your board's under stress. Your, your foam blank is under stress 
trying to, um, the foam's trying to go back to neutral and the string is holding in place. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Okay? Then you cut that, you laminate it, and then when they talk about flex, if you glass the board lightly, you may be able to get this piece of wood to flex and bend a little bit. Mm -hmm. But if you glass it strong, there's no way in hell this board flexes anymore. And then you've got a really dead heavyweight board. Now, when you have a PU bond, so let's go, let's go PU over here, and we go um, EPS, which is epoxy over here. Okay. Do you, do you want more room to draw, or are you okay? It, it, it almost feels like the PU, when, this, when the molecules bond, you've got two bonds, okay? But when EPS, EPS almost looks like this, the molecules. And when they bond at a really much higher heat, they, they really bond a lot stronger, which means that um, epoxy has a way more flex to it before it breaks, yep. where um, resin will, will snap and break is a lot more brittle. Mm -hmm. Okay. So having said that, EPS flexes better and it returns to neutral better. It's really hard for a PU to flex. Okay. And the reason being is because the stringer is trying to give the blank curve, but it's also stopping the board from flexing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so back to the main question now. Okay. Where does the strength lie in a surfboard? So check this out. If I take a piece of paper, th there's no strength in that, right? So imagine that's your cloth. There's, there's no strength at all. But now watch. If I curve that, okay, I could almost hit you with that paper. And it's strong. But watch yeah. when I do this now, and I hit you with... I can't even hit you with the paper. Yeah. So basically, in surfboards, where the overlap wraps around the board, that's where all the strength in that surfboard lies. Yeah. Okay. We had, we had a few people... That got this one, and this one I think this was the best explanation that I saw was uh, J Jamie Hamlin overlap of glassing layers. Correct. Weight of cloth combined with the density. So of Jamie, you got ten out of ten there, in for your answer, it's where the overlap is wrapped around the rail. Now also think about um, about roofs. Why do you have like corrugated roofs? Well, where, when that's bent, you're giving strength to a structure. Otherwise, all roofs would be flat. There's mm. no need for the corrugation but the corrugation is strength. So um, wherever your board has any curves and the cloth is wrapped around that curve, those are gonna be the strongest parts of your board. There we go. Yeah. The strongest part of your board is, is, okay. So, okay, answered Craig's question. So whereabouts were we up to? Um, whereabouts were we up to? We were up to me pulling the glass You were glassing. Oh, okay. So then, this is the interesting so, part. On, so then, then I do the cutting bit. Let's just put the cutting bit. Once the cloth's laid talking. on, the next step is then to actually get the resin and to try to wet out all the cloth. Now, the best way that I can explain on what it's like to laminate a board, imagine taking a towel, dipping a towel into the swimming pool and wetting the towel, but then wringing the towel out so that it's wet, but it's not saturated. Does that make sense? Mm. The more wet the towel is, the heavier your surfboard would be. So you want to wet the cloth, but you want to pull all the excess resin out. For some so reason, I haven't got the the one video. Oh, maybe that's it. Hang on. You can talk in while I try and get the, the time lapse put across. Do you have the glassing time lapse? Hopefully. This is what I was okay. thinking I might have. So um, it's, it's pretty complicated in learning how to actually move resin across the board. And it's a skill that you have to pick up. Um, the more dings you do, you kind of get a bit of an idea of what it's like wetting. But when you've got a full scale two oh. meter surface with curve in it and concave and double concave, the slightest little pull the wrong way, the cloth tends to crease up. It's stressful, <laughs> is what I can say. And then where the, where the cloth hangs over the rail, you have to pull the resin off and try to wet the overlap. Yeah. And then it creases and crinkles, and then it's almost like trying to make a bed with, with no creases in the sheet. That, that's ultimately, ultimately what yeah. you're trying to do, yeah. right? 
and and I don't know, he, he was he was sweating a little bit. I I was sweating out of my elbows and everything. I was then I was worried about whether sweat would mix with the resin. Like, oh. yeah. Clayton's little little own personal shaping shed that he has at his house is this little tin shed out in the back. It was like about in the thir- middle of like, like it's like about thirty degrees C at the back. The shed was heating up. I was sweating. There's like, like a sauna in there with all the steam coming off of me. I'm still waiting for this to take a while to go and load. But the, it so, was good fun though. So it, it was, it was. You're going to see a video of what I look like by the end of it. And so you have, so for the top deck, you have these two layers of cloths. You have the one cloth down, then you have the other cloth over the top. Then you're getting me to then pull my nail down the center to then, then you fold it, fold one layer back and then you fold the other layer back and it's all going to be rolled up tight. It's, there's, there's so many small things in it. And it, it, yeah. it, it it's, a, it's the attention to detail. And yeah. if, you, if you all your prep work's really good, you make less mistakes, and then you don't have to work nearly as hard. Mm. But if you do one thing wrong, that one thing, it haunts you every single step of the way, and it's a, it's a nightmare. Because th- there's, a, there's a bit where you have a squeegee. I'm, I'm waiting for the video to come through, but I don't know if it's going to, but there's a bit where you have a squeegee. So, so you pour the resin on, and you have a squeegee and you've got to put it up to wet the cloth. And Clay's constantly going to me, oh, you, you've got to chase the resin. So I'm trying to ch- chase the resin. So, so the best way- really, His hands are clean. I've got gloves on, but I've got resin, resin going everywhere. Elbows. Oh, he even had resin drip. Like I stuck my toes together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, I've still got resin on my, on, on my toenails now. Lucky it was sun cure, so he had to walk outside and kind of sun his toes for a bit and let the resin go hard so he can peel it off. Okay, uh, just, just with, with regards to the cloth quickly, Tom Richardson's asking, do you lay your layers uh, of deck cloth at angles? Have you found any difference in the strength in doing this? Yes. So with the top deck, so basically, um, can we go to the full screen over here and I'll draw? iPad. Uh, let me just bring up the drawing again. Oh, uh, I need to use a pen to rub it out. Uh, just draw it over the screen. Okay, so say this is our roll of cloth over here. We've got a roll of cloth, and we are going to pull the cloth over the board over here. Now, when that cloth is weaved or spun, it's got horizontal layers, but it's also got vertical layers, and they, they kind of like interweave each other, all right? So the problem with this is that if a board... Oops, something happened there. That's right, it means that that video has come through. So the problem with this is that if a wave breaks a board, it's going to break it straight across there. So if you if you angled the cloth and almost pulled it on kind of like that, wait, let me, how do I, can I go backwards on anything here? Yep. Dum, dum, there you go. Let's go backwards again, again, again. Okay, so if I've pulled the cloth at an angle, it means that now you're getting cloth going across the board, and it's a lot more harder for the wave to break a board that way. So okay. technically it's a lot more stronger. And then the second layer, you almost pull across sort of that way, and your cloth sits kind of like that. Okay. Okay. So what happens is you do get a much more stronger board. The problem is if it does crease or break it just totally annihilates the whole board and you almost can't repair it really wow yeah it just that's that's when it rips all the cloth no, off the board i had no idea that just putting the cloth in a different direction would have that much of an impact yeah because it it can't break cleanly so it breaks and rips does it make more sense it does make sense yes cool all right so um where were we we were talking about um the glassing you have your video yeah, it should have just come through then, actually. Uh, let, me, let me bring you back up full screen. You can talk for a second while I just move it across to Petra's eye. Um, or you don't have to talk if you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I was more interested in seeing okay. what's going on here. Hang on, no, that's the cut in. That's the cut in. I'm trying to find the video. Where's it just gone? I sent it across, but it hasn't, it hasn't come in. Where is it? I don't know. You've got two of those. I don't know what no, that not that. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Okay, hang on. Okay. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Petra's eye. We're, uh, as you can see, we're very well prepared for tonight. And uh, here we go. Let's bring the video in. So all of this happened in the span of the day. And this is really good news, because if any of you ever wanted to go make a board, we literally, we made a board in a day. 
We did, but you got one thing I would say is you got to make sure that you got some people who know what they're doing on standby because when I started glassing, things started to go south pretty, pretty damn fast. Uh, and luckily, we've got the amazing Gabe who was who was around on the day who who, who jumped in <laughs> and, and, and helped me move help me move the is it that one the resin around. So here we go. Okay, so we we've been moving the iPad up. We rolled the cloth. I think you can see by my face I'm sweating buckets. It looks like Gabe's about to fall asleep, and Ant is just pumped. He's oh. got his gimp gloves that he's putting on. It is, it is time lapse. So, as you can see, cloth is folded back both places there. That's good. We, so, what he's doing is he's putting resin down to put the logos on. So, you first got to um, get resin under the logo, otherwise, the logo will delaminate and it won't stick. So, he's got the the first Ombi logo on a board. Look at that. There's not many boards around that have got Ombi on the front of them. There's one right there. Yeah. Oranges, mangoes, bananas, and eggplants. <laughs> now, <laughs> okay, so we wet the nose out, then we wet the tail. So this is just to anchor the bottom layers without, so they don't move. Now, the bottom layer, you want to leave a little bit more wet so that it helps to wet the top layer when you, run, when you roll that down. So we literally just... Um, so this was this was the point in time where I was trying to do it, and Clay basically just took the squeegee out of my hand and said, "No, do it like this," because we're trying to try chase well, the resin. What I, was, what I said to Ant, let me do half. Watch what I do, and then monkey see, monkey do. You do the other side. Yeah, this monkey's not very good at doing what monkey sees. Okay, so once that's wet, I said, Ant, try to roll it down dead center. Otherwise, you're going to have one wide lap and one thin lap. Now, you'll notice when he rolls it down, all the little um, creases that ants put in his board. So this is why I say, make sure you've got some people on standby to give you a, ha to give you a hand, because I was stressing at this point. Because in theory, it looks easy, but in reality, when you start doing it, shit goes wrong fast. Yeah, what I wanted to get to. And with this being sun cure, although it was dark inside that room, there was a little bit of light coming from the door, and it, was starting, it wasn't running. It started to get a bit goopy, didn't it, after a while? But it's this, which is this, this is the bit. Yeah, where you're trying to move the cloth oh, around. This, well, yeah, and basically the whole glassing to me was just right. So you'll, you'll notice that um, I, I try to show Ant how to wet, wet the, the rails, which I'm is trying really, to find, really, really complicated. I'm trying to find that bit. Here we go. There we go. So this is Clay wetting the rails, and my attempt at wetting the rails. So I wet the one side, told Ant he's going to wet the other side. So that's me wetting it, wetting it. Took me all of about two minutes. No, no, sorry. Probably took me about 20 seconds. And I said, okay, Ant, have a go. So Ant pours cloth on the deck. And then he pulls the resin off. I think it missed the bucket, landed on the, the trough and didn't wet the rail. I think you were about to like glue my toes together. And who knows? So then um, we had a Brazilian helper jump in, try help Ant just to keep the resin on the board because it was all starting to drip off. You can see over here, all the resin's falling on the floor. <laughs> and Ant hasn't wet the rail yet. <laughs> anyway. Gabe, Gabe actually found it really funny because Gabe's been through the same process as I have. Gabe um, does a lot of... Uh, a lot of glassing for so, play in the little shed. So Gabe jumped in with a cup of, I don't know what, and started helping Ant with that side of the board. And if you look at Ant's face, he's just like whoosh, huffing and puffing, stressing. It was, it was pretty cool. I love doing it. And so, th so then it was going underneath and then wrapping it underneath. So then you've got to go underneath and fold it, fold it underneath. <laughs> look, how much, look how much attention this board is getting. Yeah. Three, three people working on it. But then you've got to go underneath it, and then you've got to, you've got to put so, it underneath. So, so there's you over there. So basically, Anne's trying to make sure that there's no excess drips, that everything's wet, and he's just almost doing like a, a fine tune. And he looks under the board and he's like, oh my gosh. It's just drips everywhere. Yeah. I remember back in the, when I, when I, when I lived back in the UK in the middle of winter, you'd, from the condensation and rain and stuff coming down, you used to get icicles hanging off of your, off of your windowsill, like you could run your hand underneath and you'd feel all these icicles. Well, that's what the bottom of the board looked like. So we basically got the moot tent to a place where it can go out into the sun. It took three of us about an hour to get that done. And then, bang, there we out, go. out to the sun. Shed door banging in the wind. That's, it. that's, it. that's, all, we, that's all we got. Yeah. We're back to the beginning again. So the, um, the one thing, so that sun cure stuff was, was bonkers. 
The it's moment, magical, hey? uh, let's, let's go to that. The moment that, that you went outside and you put it in the sun, it was just like, <coughs> all of a sudden it was just set. I was like, wow, that was crazy. It's like some sort of so magic trick. When I had my factory in South Africa and we were exporting, we are doing up to 16 boards a day. We had a sun cure box and I was setting a timer and basically you take your board, you put in a UV box and you push the button. Two and a half minutes later, you take the board out and it's done. That's bonkers. So you, you glass the board in the box two and a half minutes, you take it out the other side, it goes to the next person. So it was, it was pretty awesome. Okay, so we've got, then we've got sand in the lap. So then the board, after it's been in the glass, after, after it's been out, out in the sun, comes, comes, comes uh, you then got to obviously glass the underside of the board. So where about you've gone under and you've tucked it, you've then got to blend that fiberglass in, which again is another job which is... It's complicated, eh? Because it's so fine, because just one false move and you end up digging into the foam. It's, it's, it's yeah, it, it takes some time getting comfortable with the machine. Um, as you can see, and there, there's a lot of... Set up. Yeah, you can, you can see and so... Oh, we've uh, actually glassed the bottom here at this point. If I stop this over here, that's the overlap and that's kind of what you want to blend on that board. So if you sand too much in this zone over here, you could sand through the board. Yeah. So you can only really touch that and try to blend it. If a board's ever going to break, it's because a sander has sanded this too much and you often get um, creasing and fracturing and breaking happening because of a bad sand job. But yeah. <laughs> Craig's comment, I love Craig's comment. So stressful. <laughs> Reminds me of trying to put the contact on my kids' school books. <laughs> <laughs> any, any parent watching now who is, who's got a kid and you've got to cover those books, yeah. yeah. Ne nearly, as nearly as stressful as covering your kids' school books. It's actually more stressful. Um, so, so we started, what, bright and early, like 8 o'clock, full of gusto and, and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I was. I think I like, was we finished, like, yesterday. it was almost night time when you left, I think, hey? Five o'clock. Yeah, it's five o'clock in the evening. I think we are both stoned because oh, we're in a small room and the fumes and the resin. Yeah, as you can see, sensible Anthony was wearing a mask when I was doing the the sanding. However, not when I was doing the not when I was putting the resin on. And that evening, yes, I was extremely high from <laughs> sniffing fiberglass all day. I kept. I, I was all, about every hour. I would wake up in the middle of the night. Like my eyes would felt funny. I was like buzzing. Kept on needing to like drink water because I was so dehydrated. But um, okay. it, it was so fun though. Let's talk about your first surf on the board. Okay. Or maybe that, that's... Well, hang on. I think first we should just appreciate how oh, yeah. unimpressed I looked by the end of the day, which I think is in maybe this... Maybe it's not the other... Oh, yeah, it is no one there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit right towards the end. Whereabouts I am holding the board. I'm done. Uh, is that me holding the board? No, but you can get a bit of an idea from this image here. So I was asking a few little touch ups, like sort of finishing touches on the board, little air like, bubbles and just, so on. Like, my hair's not the best at, right at the moment, but yeah, look at me there. There is, there is a photograph somewhere. So, oh, I think I posted so, it up. With, with and it after awesome. after making your own board, you, what's your appreciation like for people that do I will, make surfboards? I will never complain about how much a surfboard ever costs ever again in my entire life. I don't care what a surfboard costs anymore. As long as I don't have to do another one. It's, it's definitely a labour of love. And the guys that do do it, they champions and they, they're definitely craftsmen. So yeah. it's, it's good. All right. So um, I'm interested, Ant. You, your, I think it was your second surf on the board. I was surfing with you. Yep. And so we haven't, we haven't got any footage of me surfing, unfortunately. We just um, the waves have been real crap, not worth filming. Yeah, and 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 also our, no one's been around to to do any filming from the beach. But so so my first surf on it. The first surf, I was a little bit just. I wasn't disappointed. I was I was stoked that I had this board, but I went on it and it just it felt sluggish. There was something about it that just felt heavy in the water, and I was putting it down to the fact that maybe it was because it was a PU and it was a bit heavier, and it just it just felt like it just wasn't going. Now I surfed it today, and today was the first day that it sort of came alive. So it's probably third surf on it, and it kind of came alive today. Really nice on the for so so for turning it feels real 
real turny. <laughs> so for, for what you wanted that board to do and yeah. for the round tail, that was that was a tick for yeah. you. Okay. What else did you want the board to do? Like did it did it hit all its marks? No, it didn't hit all of its marks. So it turned really well. But obviously I wanted it for these sort of mushy conditions. This was this was gonna be like my, my groveler board. So I wanted it to be able to to get that that push. That's the one thing that it is lacking, is that push. So I can turn really nicely, but when I take off and I do my bottom turn, of that cardboard slide, that first, it's almost like I've really got a... So it hasn't got instant speed. No. You have to make the speed. Yeah. Okay, so what does that say? Like a, a surfer like Fleet Toledo, he can make speed anywhere. And same as Gabriel Medina, all of those guys, they just stand up and the board just seems to go. Yeah. So because their bodies move really well, I know where we're heading this. they can afford to ride like round tails, skinnier boards, more yeah. high performance boards. Um, I think in your mind, you're expecting the board to naturally have that, but you took that out to give it better turning. Yeah, so there was a trade-off. Yeah, cool. So these are all the things that, that I kind of wanted you to feel, I wanted you to experience. Yeah. But I also wanted you to know that whatever rail you put in, how did that feel? Like what the bottom that you put in, how did that feel? Mm. So now you, you're tying up the, um, the design aspect with the feeling, yeah. where there was a lack of that feeling or um, a lot of that feeling. Yeah. So if I was to remake it again now, I would probably go for, I'd probably bring the, I wouldn't go quite so full on the rails. I'd probably bring them down a bit. Um, and I was talking to you earlier on about the tail because I do really like the way that it feels going around in the in the turns. But like it turns back really nicely. But when when I when I when I re reach the foam and want to go back forwards again, I, I feel like I'm getting st I'm getting stuck back. And what I'm what I'm finding I actually have to do is lift the back foot and I'm bringing the back foot almost right up next to the front foot, almost like a bit like you'd ride a longboard to get that bit of speed. And then I take the back foot back again. So there's a lot of back foot moving around. Okay, so what that sounds like is you've got too much tail rocker. Okay. There okay, so, so what you're doing is you're having to get off the tail rocker, step forward, and then it planes. Mm. Okay, so with that round tail, you should have reduced your tail rocker. You need a ladies board, a flat one at the back. <laughs> there we go, that's the, that's the biggest takeaway from tonight. Ant, Ant needs to ride a ladies board. No, <laughs> it's not that. It's just, yeah, too much tail rocket. But again, like I can decipher that like that because I've made some yeah. boards and I've got feedback from guys where like, oh, when I stay on the tail, it doesn't go, I've got to stand forward. So that, that's another interesting thing. Mm. Like you, you know, you know, you've got to think of your board in terms of what type of waves. I bet you if you ride that in punchy waves, you won't have an issue because the wave will push you. Yeah. But now that it's in flat waves, it's not working, there's too much potentially too much tail rocker. Yeah, which is kind of, obviously, that's what I made it for, was to, was to go into these, these small now, waves. I don't think I want to take that out in a punchy way. I think in the second session that you rode it, you said, mm, the board's losing speed on turns. Do you recall this conversation? Yes, I do. This is right as I thought we were going before. It's nothing to do with the board. <laughs> Let's chat about that. <laughs> what, what, chat about what? Well, the, the, the my technique's crap. No, 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 it's not that. <laughs> as a shaper, I've had a lot of guys come into me and go on, hey, the board just, it sucks. It's losing speed on turns. Like, it's, fix it. Like, give me something that actually goes. I've spent $800, it's a shit board. Yeah. Okay, so why was your board losing speed on turns, Ant? Because I surf flat. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There's a simple answer. No, that's, it, that's one question I did know the answer to this evening. That was very, what's, what's the most important thing about your surfing, Anthony? I surf flat. <laughs> so yes, I have a habit of Every single flat. person that buys a, a new board kind of stands on the board expecting it to do stuff. And it's only until you do something that the board responds. Yeah. Okay. So Ant was trying to do turns and he was loading up the tail rather than twisting and using the rail. So basically, when he, whenever you go, it's almost like when you surf, your head's here and your board needs to go sideways when you surf. Yeah. Your head was here and you're going on top of the wave and you're just almost stalling it on the turn. So as soon as Ant put it on rail, he paddled back beaming, smiling. Yeah. I was like, wow, okay, the board turns, it's got speed in the turns, it was me. And I think through that whole process, um, you're a lot more richer for it. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I, I just want to do, uh, a, a comments come through here from, from from Ian. Shaping your shaping your own board sounds like a stressful and expensive way to learn. I'm going to say this: there is it's it's an experience that money can't buy. Yes, it, it was stressful. I think part of the reason why it was so stressful is because we tried to do it in one day. Another yeah. part of the stress is when you're at Clayton looking at like don't get me wrong, having Clayton there yeah, watching no. is is really 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 helpful because obviously you you guided me, but it's also really stressful because you. are because you're constantly watching so and in terms of it it wasn't in terms of expensive i don't think it was expensive it wasn't it wasn't no what three hundred and fifty dollars no, 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 no yeah. even less than that yeah, I, I can't. But, but but put it this way the 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 experience is priceless although it was stressful i had a really good time doing it i had so much fun writing it and trying to work out what it is that i that I'd created and it's that is my creation Go on, this, is, this is known actually as the IKEA effect. This is a psychological thing, the, the, the IKEA effect, and we, we value things more that we put effort into. So I've got the IKEA effect happening with the board. Let me just show you something here. Back camera, here we go. One, two, three. There it is. There is the Mutant in all of its glory. Check out what the board's behind. There is the Mutant in all of its glory. I mean, um, let me bring you up to the side here, actually. I'm going to put picture in picture. Let me put you up in the corner. Yeah. I'm going to run around the other side of the camera and just yeah. pick it up so that everyone can see. The Mutant, the finished, the finished product. There it is. The Mutant. Go underneath. Try and get up close to the and, camera. Um, what, what's the story behind that that spray? Is, is that an orange or a brown ant? Well, the, the, okay. The, pa <laughs> the patches were meant to be orange, and I started painting them on, and then they didn't really look so orange against the green. Um, so yeah, but I'd started, so I had to finish. And then Clayton said, "Just do one random pink one." So that's the reason why there's a pink one there. Now, I want to show you uh, one more thing. So this, this is one that I designed and shaped myself. We have also... Yes, this is the one. This is currently so much fun. This, is, this thing's good. So this, this was something that Clayton designed uh, him, himself and I helped sand, sand this one. But this asymmetrical finless surfboard is that has taught me a lot of lessons i'm gonna i'm gonna leave it there but i would say that i've seen you surf on your best wave ever on that board. okay so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna come back in again just uh although the one good thing about making your own board is that when you then have to do a repair so i surfed this the other day went backwards and dug the tail in and snapped the asymmetrical bit off but look because of my new skills of being a you can't, even, glassing, tell you can't even tell that it was snapped in half there we go. Anyway, let me come back around here and uh, let me bring us back up, up on screen. So the, the finless. The finless is so much fun. I, I have, I have, you know, I, I can't even get, get, get the words out now. That is how much fun I've had. And I've learned, learned so much riding a finless. I mean, we're, we're kind of going into new territory here. And we're, we're going to have a look at I think that that thinness board has made you a way more confident surfer. I definitely have, I'm definitely the person who's having the most fun out there. Well, like you might not see it, but you're gliding into takeoffs. You're not stress paddling in. Like you want to take off in the right spot. So you're reading waves better. Um, you're surfing every wave in the pocket because you can't surf the shoulder. You can't get to the shoulder. Mm. So you're surfing a more critical part of the wave. And the bigger the waves get, the more feeling you get. So even your wave selection's improved. Um, but more importantly, you've got comfortable like being out of control. Where I think before then, you were a, a control freak and you didn't like being out of control. Yeah. So um, I think that, that's been one of the biggest learning curves. Um, so just very quickly, and I, I will just—I just want to just touch on on the on the finless because um, if you've been watching us for a while now, you know that I pretty much get very excited whenever I start to try something a, a little bit new. And it was body surfing for a while. I still love body surfing. Don't get me wrong, I still love body surfing. So and now it's just finless. Some background: when you first started body surfing, you were almost like I could almost give up surfing and just do this because it's, it's that rewarding. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah. it so much. Yeah, and I, I and thought I'd lost you. <laughs> and now it's the same for for, for, for the for the fitness. Like when we go down, I'm like oh, should, should, should I take out the fitness? And the reason for that is because 
all of, all of the things that Clayton is teaching, uh, like the coffee cup, like the Oreo biscuit, all of these things, like look where you want to go, all, the, all this stuff, on that, so I was on the Finless, and now I've got, so that I, I don't know what it's called, but the, the Wizzy Rounds, I'm able to do spinny spins. So I'm doing the spinny spins, and I'm able to con, come out of the spin, and now by putting the coffee cup forwards and leaning in, it suddenly digs in and it goes straight, and I'm just like, "What? Nah, that, 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 You're oh. actually getting around closeout sections. Yeah, it, it works. And I, yeah, my advice is if you can if you can get hold of a fitness. Now, I ha I have tried to surf my soft top fitness, completely different experience, still fun, but surfing that fitness. If you can borrow somebody's fitness, have have a go. Like you, not only are you gonna have the most fun that, you, that you've ever had, you're gonna learn so much. Anyway, we've, we've kind of moved away from, from boards. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just excited. But uh, oh, look, it's, it's 20 past eight. Jeez, we've done a, an hour and 20 minutes already. Cool. Let's have, a, let's have a look through, see if there's any questions. If anybody's got any questions about what we've covered, I think we've kind of covered everything about making boards. But yeah, there is, I, I highly recommend it. Yes, it's stressful, but there is a lot to be learned in doing it. So I'm going right back up to the beginning here. Okay. Okay. Just <clears throat> while, while, while I'm doing that, I'm going to press a really cool button. Don't tell anyone, but we're currently making um, nine foot six logs. Shh, no, don't tell them. <laughs> don't tell them that. <laughs> but we, we want to go set the points when it's one foot. Okay. Um, I'm going to put a little banner down here. I mentioned it at the beginning. If you haven't done it in the free ebook yet, then the instructions are coming up below. Look at this. It's like a like um, CNN news or whatever it is. I'm just going to go through. So we've answered the question about the lady surface. Do -do -do -do. Um, it's not a question. Okay, that was a Finns question. We've done that. Yep. Okay, quick question here. Let me get rid of that off the screen. Bonk. Okay, typical board design features which are common in taller, thinner guys, six foot two and over. So, what's typical design features for someone who's six foot design? two? So, I, I generally find that tall guys ride shorter boards. Like a, a six two guy might almost ride like a. I don't know, uh, like a six one or a six two board, and I generally find that short, like well built guys almost ride longer boards. I don't know if it's because the the swing weight and the shorter guy can manhandle a bigger board, um, and I often find that some tall people they try not look tall and stand out in the crowd, so that they often make themselves a lot smaller. Yeah. So tall people know how to um, compress and extend and almost like short people want to be seen to be taller. So they almost ride longer boards. So they've got more swing weight to throw around and so on. But um, it, it's a, yeah, it's just from my, my general observation where I think taller people ride shorter boards and shorter people ride longer well, boards. Um, I suppose it depends upon your level of surfing as well. But if we look at Raz, Raz, for example, who was he's six six. So he's six six. Was your you, you average surfer? Um, what sort of thing did? What sort of thing was he riding? Well, see, when he first came to us, he didn't have wave awareness. Um, he didn't know how to catch waves, how to pop up well. Mm. So he was making up for his inabilities in volume. Right. So he, the, the the highest volume board he would go out and buy. Yeah. Um, but towards the end of it, he he started to downsize. I think he I even made him a six foot four. Right. Yeah, and he's yep. six foot six. I think this was answered, Craig. Does getting a board laminated extra strong for some durability for your buck uh, affect flex performance? You, yeah, you did answer that. So okay. So imagine a Formula One car made of carbon graphite, um, so it's light, and then you go, oh, hang on, that car might have an accident. That's, that's rapid and reinforced steel and make it really, really heavy. How's it going to perform? So likewise with boards, if you go strong, your performance goes out the window. Okay, there you go. I, I, think, I think we answered it anyway. Yeah. See if you can answer it. I, I want to wrap this up now. I want to wrap this up in the next sort of eight minutes. Uh, interestingly, actually, uh, I thought that when Clayton said he was going to tell you a secret, uh, don't tell anybody, I thought he was going to say something completely different, and that is that, that we are almost finished on a new program, new course, which is how to buy the right board. Yes, so it's, it's, it's probably our best course ever. No, it's not the best course ever. They're all as good as each other. Well, no, okay, so I would say that over the course of a year... I think you two, had a lot of fun making it. That's 
that's that's that's probably the big difference. So, well, what's actually happened is the library of content, like of waves that we've yeah. accumulated, has has allowed us to now produce some of the best course. So keep your eye out for that. So it, yeah. it would be how to choose the how to choose the right board where Clayton breaks down everything to do with with surfboards, all the different all the different. Um, we want you guys to save and money and make the right choices when you buy a board. And I yep. think that's the big thing. Yep. Yeah. So this is one of the things that we actually answer within it, but you can do it very quickly now. I've been meaning to ask this for a while. I find riding twin fins with channels amazing. Can you just very quickly, can you explain the concept of channels and what they do? Okay, so think of a hill. To travel over the hill would take time. And then think of a tunnel that goes through the hill. Basically, the channel acts like a tunnel that makes water travel in a straight line from point A to point B. So it accelerates the water flow through the bottom curve of the board. Um, it gives you more speed. However, because there's hard edges on channels and the hard edge gives you release, if there's any wind or chop on the wave face, you might find that that board skitters and, and wants to slide out and you lose some control over channel. Also, because the board's going straight in a fast line, it doesn't like to turn. So um, it has got its ups and downs. Okay, quick question there. How do you find surfing from a crouch position on the finless versus standing tall on a fin board? I'm, I'm fine with, with, with it. I've got, I've got pretty good knees still. Okay, at the so moment, but no, hang on, hang on. I made you stand dead straight yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. So we well, so we there is another finless as well. It's just not in the, in the room. Clay took off on a wave on the finless, and as he went, I you would have thought he was on a normal surfboard. He just stood up straight, just leant in, and, and did the coffee cup. Uh, you would have thought he had fins. He didn't look like he was riding a finless, and I was like, whoa, because I saw the board accelerate but hold. And then Clay said, well, you give it a go next time, and and I have stood up. But as soon as you go flat, then it's just way hey, game over. So actually. When you stand up tall, you get better balance. The problem with the finless is that it starts to cavitate and slide out at a point and you can't predict when. Mm. So if you've got a lower sense of gravity, your recovery is quicker um, than someone standing up tall. But standing up tall, you definitely get, um, like when we walk around, we stand up tall, we get yeah. better balance. Yeah. yeah. So borrow a finless or take your fins out. So if you take your fins out, your board's got too much rocker, it won't want to plane. Basically, the finless boards that we made That's have really flat. no rocker, they are flat. So if you've got a really flat board, then maybe take the fins out? Uh, yeah. yeah. Flat and wide. Uh, okay, we've got... This is off of, um, off of uh, surfboard shapes, but this, this is a cool question. Federico, Fr Fr Frederico, newest surfer here, been surfing since April. What's the best piece of advice that you have to progress smoothly? Have a carver, surf at least four times a week. Nice work. So if you, if you could give one piece of advice that would help somebody progress smoothly, what would it be? Um, don't forget that surfing is about riding a wave. Um, a lot of people try to surf the board and not the wave. So you always want to connect with the wave's energy and pay attention to what the wave is doing. And the best place to do that is closer to the foam. So you don't want to stand up and run away from the foam. You want to make friends and be comfortable with the foam. Um, I always say to someone, imagine surfing your wave blind. You need to feel where the wave is and as soon as you're doing that, someone will say, wow, you look like Ethan Ewing because you've got your hands in the right place. Mm. Or you look like a Tom Curran. If you get a lower sense of gravity, um, the wave's not going to be able to throw you off. Your style's going to look nicer. Yeah. If you know where you are on that wave by being able to touch the foam, touch the top, touch the bottom, you're going to have spatial awareness. And once you've got spatial awareness, you can start doing things on that wave. Okay. The one thing that I'm going to add in there as well for that coming from an intermediate point of view is definitely it's taken me and it's still now I still revert back to old habits but really work on that on that neutral stance right so, so standing up and being front on rather than standing up in in that poo man it's taken me so long to to break that habit so if you can just get that right from the outset I think finless has really done for you though 
I hope so. I hope so. I've yeah. run the bindles too much, so and, and now I'm riding the thing that I've made, so I need to get back on a, on a slightly higher performance board. Uh, and the other thing as well that I would say for, for Smoothly, and so we had somebody in, in, in the insiders group, so somebody who is on the 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 twelve week program who suddenly found that they that they were lacking the motivation. And I think that it's if if you if if you're surfing four times a week, there's a chance you're taking it really seriously. Make sure that you keep it fun as well. Yeah. Otherwise, you might just end up beating yourself up. Keep it fun so that because we learn better when, when, when we're having fun, and that's what it's that's that's that's, that's what it's all about. So some people get upset when they fall and they think, oh, they're not surfing well. Falling is you learning. Yeah, failing forward, falling yeah. forward, falling forward. Think about when you started riding your finless. How much did you fall? Well. Well, not when I started. Every single wave I fall. Exactly, and look at look at how you, how exponential. Yeah. You, if you d- just started um, going straight and not falling, I think you'd plateau out really quick and get bored of it. Mm. Um, you've got to fall so much more. Yeah, we'll try and um, we'll try and get some footage actually of, of surfing the the, the mutant, uh, and also a bit of footage of the fitness as well. We we did have some, but unfortunately it got erased. Quick question there. When are we guys? When 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 are you guys coming down to the wave pool? Will be happening soon. We still can't travel in and out of Queensland. We're still we're still locked in up here. Yeah, and um, I think the wave pool Facebook group um, they have contacted us trying to maybe set something up. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, we're, we're still in talks with that there. So don't, let's not get, let's not start jumping up and down too much yeah. with that one there. But there could be something happening. And bought me a free ride in the wave pool for my birthday. <laughs> and since I bought it, we've been on the yeah. channel. <laughs> so I've, I've got a free pass. I want to use the damn thing. Okay. How does spine tech stringer differ in the way that you construct the board compared to the PU wooden stringer that you have? Split the foam. Okay. So with a with a I'm um, going to grab it. C blank. It's sometimes cut out of a mold, or it's it's got c- curve in it already. Um, so. There's a piece of spine tech. What this, what this, when, the, when the EPS is cut on a machine, the curve is cut into it, and you don't need the wood to hold the stringer. So basically, when the spine tech... This which, stuff is indestructible. Which is this stuff over here. When this goes into the board, it sits in a neutral state. So it sits like that on the board, neutral. Now, when you stand on the board or when you press on it, you actually load up the spine tech, okay? And then it bounces back to neutral again, which is the total opposite of a P of a, a PU board. A PU board, it's bent to the to the to the rocker yeah. of the board. And then to get this to perform more, you gotta bend it more and then it, it never wants to return to neutral because it's it's under tension. The good thing about Spantec, if you watch this, I can bend it so much and look at the like <laughs> the recoil's strong. So if I do this, check this out. Like, like there's there's a lot of kick on that, and they they're pretty hard to break. Uh, so it freaks me out every single time you do this. Check. So that there's a piece of spine tech, and basically, what happens is it gives the board memory, and. The memory is for that board to return to its natural state. Mm. So even if your board is wanting to break, the spine tech works for the blank and brings it back to its natural state. Yeah. And it's almost like being on a trampoline, like you, you put pressure on the trampoline, it flicks you off and brings itself back to its natural state. And, and in saying that, that's something else that I, have, that, I, that I have learned in shaping my own board in the fact that now I'm writing PU. So all of my other boards, they're all spine techs, obviously, because Clay's made all, all of my other boards. I could feel the difference in going to a PU versus that one there, which is the reason why I kind of wanted to do the same board again, but with that in there, because I can, that pop, that pop, I haven't got it on the PU that I, that I have. So yeah, that's another little thing that I've learned there. Right, we're gonna quickly answer the last few questions. Da-da-da-da. On the crowd fun to send to Gold Coast. <laughs> okay. Can you use a thruster thinness? Uh, we've already answered that, so as long as it's a really flat board, yeah. then yes. Okay, last couple of questions, and then we are gonna wrap up. Uh, just before we get to the last couple of questions, as I said before, if you haven't downloaded yourself a copy of that thing yet, the the plays, so this is the original 
book that Clayton wrote, this is what Ombi is based upon, he's yours for free. All you gotta do is head to ombi.co, click the button that says join Surfax, and you enter in your email, we'll get that sent through to you, you're gonna get a whole bunch of videos and yeah. a whole bunch, of, whole bunch of other really cool stuff as well. That, that stuff that we got there was almost like our Bible. Um, basically everything that we've come up with, this that was the blueprint for it. The problem is that when we try to sell it initially, um, there's almost too much information and people didn't want to read it. Mm. But if you've got time and you go through it, 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 it as you start, it's, it's like you unravel one layer of the onion and there's just, there's more information. It just makes more sense. Yeah. And you unravel that and there's more information and it just gets better and better and better. I'm, 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 so I will say this, obviously you, you're going to think I'm biased because I'm part of Ombi, but before I even knew who Clayton was, when I was trying to find out more about surfing, I found this PDF on a, on a website, was it ASP or something, yeah, the original ASP. website? And I, and I bought it and I was enthralled. That's quite a good word, isn't it? I was enthralled in this, in this PDF. I read the whole thing from 